In the world we've all known, it's meant to happen something like this. Boy meets girl, they fall in love, and through that relationship, they conceive a baby. But now there's a potential new way to create life, and it has many of us terrified. It's called human cloning. It will happen, and it will not be done for the best reasons. It will be done for all kinds of bizarre reasons, but be in no doubt that it will be done. I see it as just one more tool in the whole uh, array of tools that we now have to help people have children. And I think that's a very, very important reason that cloning should be allowed. The battle has been joined, even as the first cloned baby remains a glimmer in the eye of scientists. After all, what we're talking about doing is making exact replicas of ourselves. Strictly speaking, it would be legal to clone me, for example, tomorrow. And this is the place it's most likely to happen, a leading IVF clinic outside of New York. Behind those walls, there are people with the technology, the ability and the desire to genetically engineer human embryos, to be the first in the world to successfully clone a human being. There's no doubt that human beings will be cloned. Dr. Jacques Cohen, a leader in his field, simply needs the approval of his clinic's ethics committee to make history. So if I had the money, you had the permission, you could clone me tomorrow? Well, I wouldn't say tomorrow, it'll take a year or two. We, we, could, we could clone you probably in within two years. What you're seeing here is an actual cloning taking place at the research facility in Scotland that pioneered the technique. In theory, it's blindingly simple. Here, it's an animal. But just as easily, you can take a cell from a human, a scraping of skin will do. Then, get an egg from a female, remove the nucleus and fuse the two with a spark of electricity. And ta-da, you have an embryo. Implant the embryo in a woman, and nine months later, you have a carbon copy of the person from whom the skin scraping was taken. What is wrong with me cloning me for a child? I'd feel sorry for your child. Your child is going to grow up with a tremendous emotional baggage of having to cope with you trying to live your life out again through her. I would feel sorry for a child like that. What happens to identity? What happens to personality? What happens to teenage rebellion when you're rebelling against yourself? When a parent says, you know, I can see you take after me. This is absolutely taking after. Looking at all aspects of gene technology, how we can take a gene from your body and put it into one of those goldfish. And make a very exciting goldfish. <laughs> well, <perhaps laughs> Dr. Patrick Dixon, a bioethicist based in London, says human cloning is imminent, probably unstoppable, and most certainly wrong. It'll be done for spares, it'll be done on some ego trip, it'll be done for emotional reasons, it'll be done to, to offset some pathological grief mechanism that thinks that somehow we will be able to recover the identity just because we recover the genetic profile of someone. I can think of a number of cases where um, cloning would not just be acceptable but the appropriate thing to do. In the race and, to be uh, the first to clone a human, family, one of those barracking the loudest is Dr. Lee Silver, professor of molecular biology at I Princeton University in America. I think that the important thing to realize is that there's nothing synthetic about cloning. We're taking, uh, the people who will clone will be taking living cells and taking living cells and converting them into embryos that will become people someday. It doesn't matter how they came about? No, I don't think so. As long as, they, as long as the process that brought them about didn't cause any harm to them. The possibility of cloning has been around for decades. Then, in February of this year, came the living proof it could be done. A lamb called Dolly was cloned in Scotland from the breast tissue of an adult sheep. Well, this is Dolly. A sheep, but one sheep which has managed to change our understanding of how life begins forever. Little Dolly and many other species of animals cloned since, including monkeys, are powerful <coughs> evidence that we humans can replicate ourselves. It's a bit like taking a cutting from a plant in the garden. 
that we can show you a photograph album of exactly what your child will look like on the second birthday, fourth, eighth, tenth, thirty-second birthday. Come to that. We can show you they'll have a receding hairline at the age of 34. They'll be completely bald at 45, but a musical genius into the bargain. That's great. And there are people who would be prepared to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for that kind of pedigree result, guarantee, especially if they can't have children of their own. I've been approached three times in the last months uh, by couples who cannot produce in any other way. Um, and that was a serious approach? Those were serious approaches, yes. Uh, there was one, one uh, uh, person who was very able in formulating uh, that his wife who is now about 48, and, and he, uh, he therefore thought that it would be a good scenario to, to have her reproduce by cloning, cloning technology. And would it be? Well, I presume it is an application, yes. Because you keep, you keep the gene pool in the family. You don't use any outside sperm or outside eggs for that couple to reproduce. So she would carry the pregnancy and she would carry her own, own identical twin. So there's seemingly already a demand. There's a demand, yes, definitely. I think people should have the right to use their own genetic material in any way that they see fit to have their own children. That's the way they've been doing it for millions of years. Now they have a few more twists on the game. They can do it in slightly different ways than they've done it before. But in this brave new world, there is a distinct and totally disturbing downside. Take a swab from the world's greatest racehorse, and presto, you have stables full of identical champions. Same genes, same temperament, same speed. Give Michael Jordan a simple blood test, sell off the cells to some sports mad parents, and you have a whole generation of super athletes running around. Or Elle McPherson's, not lookalikes, but the real thing. I think that's inappropriate because they're using somebody else's genetic material. But that's a case in, in, which is very different from the typical cloning case that I think will really occur, where people are using their own genetic material. It certainly wouldn't be appropriate, but it certainly could happen. I think it could happen. I think that's one of the few areas in which I would worry about cloning, is, is this one area. He betrayed you! He betrayed the Iron Race! It's the frightening scenario of so many science fiction books and movies. In The Boys from Brazil, a mad Nazi scientist sets up a cloning production line of little Führers. You are the living duplicate of the greatest man in history. Adolf Hitler. The place where cloning could be abused on a very grand scale would be by someone who had power over a lot of people's uteruses, to put it bluntly. A dictator, someone in some horrible regime who wished to somehow promote him, himself or his own identity or his own genetic profile had to somehow populate the earth. And such a person with today's technology and with the mentality that maybe Adolf Hitler had or maybe someone like Saddam Hussein has today could without doubt reproduce themselves 5,000, 10,000 or 100,000 times over. Just as horrifying, say the critics, is the very real scenario of desperate people who are dying of diseases, growing clones of themselves just to harvest the newborn's vital organs. Human life has zero value in such a situation. Human life uh, be, uh, before birth becomes just a means of manufacturing organs. The fact is we don't have the technology to grow an individual organ in a test tube because it needs a blood supply, it needs a liver, it needs kidneys. But we can produce organs in whole people. But what happens when you don't want the whole person? In fact, the whole person will be a nuisance. Well, you just discard it like every, everything else we discard. And uh, this is horrendous. Would you feel comfortable about cloning for, for human body parts? No, I don't think that's an appropriate thing to do if it would harm the newborn child because the newborn child should be treated like any other child uh, in the world and be given all of the rights of, of human dignity so it would be totally unethical to to have a new child born and take a heart out of that child that would be that would be equivalent to murder but what about a kidney a kidney is a different situation because a person can live very well with just one kidney one two three happy birthday to you happy birthday 
Marissa Ayala is a window on that frightening future of harvested humans. A child specifically brought into the world as a bone marrow donor for her dying sister. But I will beat it. I will. Eight it's years ago, as a schoolgirl, Anissa Ayala was farewelling classmates. But I just want to ask you guys. She was dying of leukemia, and no match could be found for her rare bone marrow. So her parents made a controversial decision. I did get pregnant specifically to see if she would be a don't, you know, a match for Anissa. Yes, we did. We did do that. Anissa, the question has to be: if your parents hadn't basically defied the critics, right? What would have been the outcome? Most definitely, I wouldn't be here today. That was what we were up against. Anissa had only a 25% chance that her baby sister's blood would match. Cloning would have given the guarantee of a perfect match. So as a family, you would say, go ahead and clone. Or if it's a matter of life and death, <laughs> and if you don't clone and that, your that means your child's gonna die, I would say, yes, go ahead and clone. You can't just stand by, like in our case, we couldn't stand by and just see our child die slowly. So I would say yes, if it's a matter of saving that child, yes, go for it. This is a perfect example of where cloning would be an appropriate course of action because if they were able to clone the older child instead, the newborn child would be 100% able to, to act as a donor for the older child. But of all the possibilities and scenarios opened up by Dolly the sheep and the Scottish scientist who made her, the most controversial, certainly the most incredible, is that she was produced with no help whatsoever from a ram. So gone is the absolute need for male sperm, or for that matter, male cells of any kind. Completely asexual reproduction is here. And whether we like it or not, that raises issues that will affect us all. This process that we could do still doesn't require me to have a male partner. This is true, yeah. You don't need you don't need a male partner, nor do you need sperm donor. You don't need any frozen sperm. You only need cells from yourself and, and the eggs of another woman. Women do not need males to assist them in having a child. Correct. We have a blueprint for a female human race. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.